Luke 19, 1 through 5. Once you find it, would you declare, I have it. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. You may be seated. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, Catch me if I fall. Catch me if I fall. Would you look at the person beside you and say, would you promise me that if I fall, you'll try to catch me? Catch me if I fall. If Maxine Waters gets her way, and wins an impeachment of Donald Trump under the charges of abuse of power. Yes, he would lose his placement as president, but will not face the revoking of citizenship. Such was not the extremity of the penalty exacted on Lucifer as was recorded in Isaiah, who recalls how he once served as the head of the fine arts department of heaven. All music had to be approved by him. Regrettably, he attempted to redirect the worship into his direction. He started a civil war amongst the seraphims and attempted to pull a coup d'etat. When God got wind of the uprising, he didn't just strip him of his title, but threw him out of heaven, making him the very first to fall from grace. One would think that that's a lesson for all of humanity, that anybody can lose their status their prestige or their title in just a moment. If you don't believe me, ask, please, Joan of Arc, the young French girl who had visions that led to victories against the English in the Hundred Years' War. She was later captured by her enemies, charged, tried, and convicted leading her to being burned alive at the stake. Sometimes, my dear friends, you can fall by falling in the wrong hands. She died simply because she had visions about them losing and they captured her. Whatever you do, please don't fall for somebody who resents you. The worst thing that you can do is fall into the hands of people who are jealous of you and want to find a way to siphon off your gift. I wish I could have got this sermon to Samson in time because they kept asking him the probing question, what makes you so strong? They were not enthralled by his, by his personality, his wit, charisma or charm they just wanted to know the secret of his strength and regrettably for Sam he fell into the hands of a reckless barber Galileo the Italian scientist was a subject of an inquisition in 1615 for his claims of Helen which is the notion that the sun 
is the center of the universe. This was contrary to the Pope's position that the earth was the center of the universe, forcing the church to reevaluate its own theology. They forced Galileo to recant his claims and placed him under house arrest until his death. Later, long after he had died, the church had to apologize. Might I say to somebody who's in close proximity to you, sometimes it's not a fall, but you are being thrown down because you think outside of the box. And you are, in fact, staged and centered around stagnant people. Galileo is a lesson for all of us that sometimes your stifling is not from satanic properties. But sometimes your, satanic, your stifling comes at the helm of the church. Because the church becomes wedded to tradition over revelation. That we are so connected to what God has done that we miss what God is doing. And I'm believing for 50 of you who are in this room that God is breaking you away from religion and freeing you into relationship. The call of God, hear me, is not for you to just know the doxology, for you to just know the three cores, amen. But do you know God for yourself? If, in fact, your coming to God in church is just about ritual so that you know all of the liturgy, but you still don't know how to get to the foot of the cross, then it is in vain. God needs your heart more than he needs your attendance. And a whole lot of you have perfect attendance, y'all not saying anything, but you still haven't given God your life. It is my prayer that this summer that you will get an earnest relationship with God to the extent that when you need a prayer you don't have to track down the pastor but you know how to pray for yourself. I can't hear nobody that when you need a word from God you don't have to wait all the way till Sunday and it's Wednesday afternoon but you know how to seek out scriptures for yourself and that's what God is calling for. Recently, the British Broadcasting Company aired the controversial d documentary entitled Bill Cosby, Fall of an American Icon. It opens with glowing praise outlining how the trailblazer was the consummate role model, father figure, great husband, and redefined the human existence for black people in America. He challenged the stereotype of blackness being wrongness to, in fact, exuding and exemplifying ebony excellence. Before the Cosby Show, I don't know whether you know that Bill Cosby had three consecutive Emmys for I Spy. And then the program takes a dark turn. Watch this. When woman after 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 woman testifies. He drugged me, he raped me. And then he threatened me because of the statue of limitations. The trial he is now on is representing just one of 21 accusers. His name has summarily been taken off university buildings. His star has been stripped from Hollywood's Walk of Fame. His reruns are no longer on rotation and his entire legacy is being obliterated. His fall is really a jump without a parachute because of delusional invincibility. So many people, once you get elevated, you believe that you cannot fall. Such was the lot of so many corporations on Wall Street that birthed the book, Too Big to Fail. But I want you to know this, you got to be careful how you treat people going up. 
Hallelujah, because you're going to pass those same people when you're going back down. Don't be so reckless that you convince yourself that you won't have an accident. That seal can be a crash that will burn your credibility. And you've got to, in fact, begin to pray in earnest, Lord, don't let me fall. I need 80 of you to just pray that with your pastor. Would you lift up that hand as high as you can? Would you pray it with everything that you can from your spirit? Come on, everybody. Would you declare it out loud? God, don't let me fall. Hallelujah. I need you to say it again. Lord, please don't let me fall. See, some of y'all can't pray that prayer because you believe you always going to stay on top. You believe you always going to be where you are. But I cannot talk to some of you who you're praying, Lord, don't let me fall. And I'm not talking about the status, but here's for 80 of you. Don't let my health fall. Please don't let my vision fall. Don't let my mental faculties fall. Please don't let my family fall apart. Don't let my marriage fall. You, 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 you got to pray, Lord. Don't, don't, don't let me fall. You, you got to keep me in the position, here it is, that you put me in so I don't talk myself out of it. I'll never forget this. It was about seven years ago. Seven years ago, uh, Bishop Jakes called up my father and asked him to come preach uh, for manpower. He asked him to come preach uh, for manpower uh, in Dallas, Texas. Thousands upon thousands of men are coming. And Bishop Jakes called Bishop Bryant said, I want you to come preach for manpower. And uh, I, I, I called Dad. I, I, I said, Dad, Bishop Jakes wants you to come preach at manpower. Can you check this date for me? He's waiting for me to call right back. Uh, he said, give me just one minute. And uh, he got on the phone, said, Jamal, tell him I can't do it. I, I, I said, uh, what, no, uh, Bishop Jakes wants you to come preach uh, for him at manpower. It's going to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of men. He said, no, I, I, I heard you. I can't do it. I said, why? Why can't you do it? He said, I'm preaching that day. I said, I said, I said you, you, you preaching somewhere outside of Megafest where, where you preach? He, he, he said, I'm preaching for an usher's anniversary. I said, I said, no, man, cancel the usher's anniversary and go preach for Bishop Jakes. He said, no, uh, Jamal, integrity's got to mean something. He said, in that little church, it won't be but 150 people there, but I gave them my word that I was going to come, so it may not look as as big as what the other thing looks like but God made me a promise if you are faithful over a few things he'll make you ruler over many some of you are gonna fall because you keep chasing the big stuff but you're not a steward over the small stuff and I I need just 80 of you who are in the room who know folk look at you crazy about some of the decisions you make and some of the stuff you turn down but I would rather the honor what God has given me in this season so I don't take a fall. The sobering reality is that you can go down fast. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? I said you can go down fast. You can live your whole life and one incident, one accident can take you out of the realm of everything that you've worked for. I know some of you are not in danger, but for the few of us who are, I need you right where you are. Elbow your neighbor. Tell them, pray for me, please. Because in this season of my life, I cannot take a fall. Hallelujah. When I was younger, I could bounce back quicker. But now I done worked too hard. I done sacrificed too much. I done gave up too great of a price and folk don't understand I gotta safeguard everything that God gave me because I can't let it fall that's why I don't let everybody in my house that's why I don't entertain everybody's company that's why I don't go everywhere that I'm invited that's why I don't jump to the very first thing that is offered because I fell for some stuff before but this time after done all the stand I gotta stand there for. I'm in Luke chapter 19. 
And in Luke chapter 19, Jesus finds himself coming through the same road. I hope you'll hear this. Jesus finds himself coming through the same road where the man fell, walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. And that same man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, watch this, he was jumped from behind. You already know the story by now. He was beaten and he was left half dead. But that's not what happens in Luke chapter 19. Is Jesus is going through Jericho and he encounters a man by the name of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, friends, is a chief tax collector. He represents an establishment that's stripping impoverished people of wealth. In that hour, the IRS representatives weren't on salary. Let me give it to you again. In that hour, the IRS representatives were not on salary. Here it is, that when they went to collect taxes, they attached their own service fee in order for them to make a living. Can you imagine the IRS agent assigned to your case has no salary but can only take excess of what they can get from you? He hears what the Bible teaches us. It says that Zacchaeus is wealthy. Not only is he wealthy, he is established and is the lead tax collector, which means he has taken advantage of a whole lot of people. He's taken advantage of a lot of people and is living an exorbitant lifestyle. It states, watch this, that groceries are in fact in a crazy place in the black community because where it is that you are, there is a tax attached to it. I don't know whether you know it or not, but milk, eggs, bacon, apples, please hear me, produce are higher in the hood than it is in the suburbs. There's, there's a tax connected to it. I don't know if you've ever checked this. To you, for you to fill your gas tank in the inner city is a whole lot higher than it is for you to get it on 695. I can't hear anybody. I don't even want to talk about how much higher your car insurance premiums are if in fact you live in an overwhelmingly black neighborhood and zip code. I can't even talk about the predatory practices of home mortgages and payday loans that are in fact angling to take and separate you from your money. You're paying a tax just for being black. And people in America don't understand, whatever you do, don't kick me when I'm already down. If we follow the metaphor of Zacchaeus, watch this, Zacchaeus is a jiu-jitsu black belt because he keeps kicking people while they're down. He keeps taking riches from poor people. And Zacchaeus, watch this, is in fact the size of his moral and ethical code. You just missed that. Zacchaeus is the size of his moral and his ethical code. The Bible describes him as short in stature. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Every person who's in this room, I need you to lift up that hand and place it above your head like so. Watch this. Here's what I want you to pray. Lord, repeat after me. Lord, make me bigger than my circumstance. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. I said, have that hand over your head. Declare it out loud. Lord, make me bigger than my circumstance. Put that hand down. I'm believing this summer God is going to stretch you beyond your situation. He's going to enlarge your territory. You do not have the energy or the time to fight with small-minded people. I need you to elbow your neighbor. Tell them you bigger than that. What God is getting ready to put in you, watch this. You are getting ready to be David the size of Goliath. I'm, I'm telling you, you get ready to be a giant in your field. That no matter what people do, they're going to have to look up to you because 
because you set the stage and you set the standard. I'm not asking whether you 5'7 or 5'9 or 6'3. All I'm telling you is God just put the spirit of Jabez on you. He's getting ready to enlarge your territory. Whenever it is you see yourself coasting into mediocrity and average and mundane, stop yourself and tell yourself I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than this little check y'all trying to give me. I'm bigger than having to fight for my dignity. I'm bigger than having to lobby in order to be heard and to be respected. I need you to lay hands on yourself and shout out loud, I'm bigger than this. I'm telling you today when you get home, look at that house. Yes, God, I'm thankful for a roof over my head, but my spirit is telling me I'm bigger than this. When you walk out of this church and you look at that little piece of car that's getting ready to fall down, kick the tire and tell it I'm bigger than this. I'm telling you God is getting ready to give you what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. God has got to make you bigger than your circumstance. Pastor, how short is Zacchaeus? Is he a midget? Is he a dwarf? See an adult wearing kids' clothes? I want you to know how short Zacchaeus is. This is how short Zacchaeus is. Empowerment, I don't want you to miss it. He is short because he can't see past people. Y'all just missed that. He, he's in the crowd, and because of the crowd, he can't see Jesus. You are always going to be short if all you can see is what other people think and what other people say and what other people believe. But there are few of us in the room that knows my faith is of such. I got to go beyond what people said about me. I got to see beyond what they feel about me because I believe what God has for me is not limited to other people's opinion about me. I need you to tap the person in front of you and tell them my destiny is beyond on you. There's nothing you can do to block me. There's nothing you can do to slow me down. There's nothing you can do to stop the call of God that is on my life because I got to see past people. I see beyond what you did to me. I got to say that again for 20 y'all. I see beyond what people did to me because they thought what they did was going to cripple me and they don't even know it strengthened me. I, I needed that to get to where I am. I got to see past people. I got to see past people, and in order for me to see past people, the Bible says he runs ahead. I'm in a rush to see what God's getting ready to do. God, you, you just missed what I just said. I, I am in a rush to see what God is getting ready to do. Get out of my way if you ain't going to worship him. Move, move out of my way if you ain't going to give God glory. Please, please don't just sit here if you ain't going to give him praise. I'm trying to see what God is going to do. I want to see you, God. I want to see him do something today. God, I wish I was in a church. I, I, I want to see it happen. I, it ain't even got to be for me. I, I 
just want to see a move in this place. I, I, I need you to just elbow somebody and say, keep your eyes open. He can make do it quickly. Hallelujah. I don't know what row it is, but I feel like it's going to be in my section. God getting ready to do something, and I want to see what God is getting ready to do. Zach climbs ahead and he climbs above to a sycamore tree. And in case you don't know, sycamore trees can go up to 175 feet. And Zach climbs it. <laughs> sycamore can go to 175 feet. And Zach climbs it. The leaves on a sycamore tree average half a foot. God help me. And uh, 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 the branches are so long they get twisted. Uh, and Zach climbs it. 175 feet. Just so I can see Jesus. I don't think too many of y'all are going to shout me. Maybe the, just the first three rows. Can, can you imagine that sometimes God elevates you just so you can see him? Hallelujah. It ain't for you. He just wants you to have a better look of what he's able to do. I, I came to tell the real worshipers, get ready for elevation. Get, get ready to go to a whole nother level. It ain't so you can floss. It's so you can see him. He elevates him 175 feet. And Jesus is walking by. And sees him. God help me. He, he sees him. And I, I don't know whether you can handle it. Because this time Jesus is not at the naked fig tree. God help me. He sees him 175 feet in the air. Non-Bible reasons are not going to pull this together. Did I tell you the leaves are half a foot? And the question you got to be asking as emerging embryonic biblicists is how does he see him? He sees him because Aunt Cynthia, uh, Zach is starting to look like Adam. He's covered himself in leaves. God help me in the moment that God is coming. Because of all of the filth that he's done, he wants to see God, but he doesn't want God to see him. I can't hear nobody. And I, I'm talking to a few of you who are in the room that says, yes, I want to see a move of God. But God, I'm not sure I want you to see me right now because I've done some stuff and I, I went some places and I mistreated some people. And Jesus stands under a 175 foot tree. And he says something, Sean, I'm getting out of here. He says something uh, that blows my mind. It upsets me and makes me nervous. He's climbed 175 feet. Watch what Jesus says. Come down. God, I can't hear nobody. And then that next word is what scares me. He says, come down. Here's the word. Immediately. God, I, I, I hope I can find somebody in the room. And Zach got to make a critical decision. I got to get to Jesus. Why? Because he's calling me. 
Hallelujah. And, and he wants to get to Jesus as fast as he can. So he's got to make a calculated decision. It's too risky for me to climb. God help me. Can, can I jump down the way he is? And here's where some of you ought to have solace. Is that Zach rationalizes to himself. If I jump, he'll be there to catch me. Hallelujah. And I, hallelujah. Maybe this is just for me. Some of y'all don't need this. But some of us ought to be giving God glory. That I fell from where I was. But I didn't get hurt. Because he was right there to catch me from. Hallelujah. To catch me from my fall. I'm not preaching to stuck up people. I'm. I'm talking to some of you who need to know this, and I hope you'll worship him with a whole heart. Is the fall is what got me to him. God, I can't hear nobody. Had I stayed up in that lofty place, I would have never got in his arms. But it was the fall that made me get right to his heartbeat. In Genesis 3, we have the fall of man. But in Luke, watch this, the man jumps. And he says, I need you to, to fall. Watch this. So number one, you know that I'll catch you. And number two, because I need you to know, watch this. Unlike everybody else that I've called in Luke, I'm not calling you to send you. I'm calling you. Watch this, because Zach, I got to get you home. And you are so far from home that I knew only a fall could get you home. God, I can't hear nobody. You, you were too, doing too well out there. But sometimes I got to make you go through something just so I can get you back home. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm saying. Sometimes, this is just for 30 of you, take your hand off your child. Sometimes they got to go through a fall just so that they can find out who God really is. I'm not promising that you're going to be rich or be debt free. I'm not promising you that this is the year you're going to get married. I'm not telling you you next to become the supervisor. I'm, I'm just here to underscore with the people around you already know that if you fall, he'll be there to catch you. My time is up. I am. Uh, my time is over. I am. Uh, but I, 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 I got to open this altar for 90 seconds for people who've fallen back into a cycle. And it just dawned on you, he caught you. You don't relapse in the drugs, alcohol, gambling. And the only reason why you are alive from falling from that is he had to have been right there. 10% of Baltimore's citizens are addicted to heroin which means I got a heroin addict in this church right now. And God caught you. God, I can't hear nobody in here. Those of you who are in this room, it ain't a whole lot of you. It's just four or five of you who your spirit is pulling on me even right now. You fell but didn't hit rock bottom. Because God knows had you gone back to that place, you wouldn't have been able to climb out of it. 
That's who you are. Please, I don't want to embarrass you. I want to empower you. What Zach said, um, come down. Would you please? Come on, come on. I, I want to go home with you. I'm waiting on three more of you, please. Will you come? Come on, come on, come on, come on. She's trying to break your fall. This, there's no space for arrogance and for ego. Come on, I need you. Come on. He, he wants to go home with you. I'm waiting on one more person. Come on, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. This is our year of full recovery. I said, this is our year of full recovery. It ain't going to kill you. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I'm waiting on you. He's going to catch you if you fall. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on one more person. My spirit can't get released. Wherever it is that you are, I need you to come. You can't go back to that person. You can't go back to that lifestyle. You can't go back to that cycle of behavior. Zacchaeus, come down. I, I want to go home with you. Come on, wherever you are. Would you come? You holding up the whole service. I need you to come. I need somebody to give God glory like God is able. I can't believe y'all going to act stuck up like that. Come, come down. That hand is lifted. All of you at this altar, if you'll pull in as close to me as you can. Hallelujah. It says, come down immediately. I want you to lift your hands. I want to just say something to you, and I'm going to let you go. He says, Zach, I got to do something in your life. But I can't do it around all these people. Because they want me to judge you. They want me to scold you. They want me to rebuke you. And the problem is they don't understand you're still my child. So Jesus says to Zacchaeus, what I say to you at this altar, I'm not going to do this in front of all these people. You ain't going to embarrass me in this store says everything that I need to go over with you I'm going to do it when we get home would you lift up that hand please I pray that when you get home the presence of God will meet you there I pray that your home will turn into a sanctuary when you get home, you'll feel the presence of God. That God will give you peace. God doesn't want to guilt you. He wants to transform you. I pray that today starts a new chapter of your life. That old things have passed away. And all things are becoming brand new. All of you at this altar, lift up that hand as high as you can. I can't wait to see what God's going to do when you get home. And when you get home, here's for 80 of you that'll shout, it's going to happen immediately. God, I wish I was in the church. I said, when you get home, it's going to happen for you immediately. And I declare that it is so in Jesus' name. Empowerment partner with me in faith. Do me a favor, please. As they go back to their seats, 
Would you shout for them like a miracle is waiting at home? You can go back to your seats. Come on. I can't hear you. I said, give God glory like a miracle is waiting at home. Y'all got to shout better than that. You got to give God better praise than that. You, you got to give God better glory than that. A miracle is waiting at home. Every person is standing. Every person is standing. Those of you who believe by faith, we're going to give the devil a nervous breakdown today. Watch this. Those of you who believe by faith, God going to do something amazing. Watch this. Don't shout yet. As soon as you get home. Y'all don't believe that? I said, how many of you believe by faith? You ought to shout like your phone is going to ring. Like there's going to be a message at the door. I can't hear nobody. Like whoever is in your house is going to have an attitude makeover. God is going to do something when you get back home. 